So thank you for taking the time to answer some of our questions. Um, how's your journey down? Not too bad, not too bad, but you know, obviously, I, as I said, I was in, in, uh, on holiday in Devon until Friday, then had to go back to Brighton to play at the Fringe a couple of nights, and then I've driven all the way back down today from Brighton, but it was fine, you know. Yeah. I enjoy the drive, to be honest with you. It's a chance to sit down, listen to some things, and just enjoy the scenery. Yeah, yeah. see the countryside. Exactly. Yeah, yes, brilliant. It's fine. Um, so, have you, visit, have you visited or played Cornwall before? I have played in Newquay a couple of times. Okay. Um, I'm sure That's I where we're from. Here. Oh, right. Yeah, there. yeah. Oh, good stuff. <laughs> I couldn't for a lifetime remember where, where I had played. I, mean, I did play many years ago, a sort of burlesque night in Newquay. Okay. I don't think they got it quite right. There were certain, I don't know, I think there were lots of people, people that came along. Well, I mean, it's fine by me, but they're quite young, and a lot of them just thought burlesque meant just go to Ann Summers, <laughs> buy some undies, and just wear that. Yeah. Which was fine, you know, it's, yeah. it's fine by me. It yeah. wasn't exactly the aesthetic, but it was fine. Okay, perfect. So, um, tell us a, a bit about Mr. Be the Gentleman Rhymer. Um, well, I do what I call chap hop, mm -hmm. which is uh, sort of basically reconnecting hip hop and its ilk to manners and the Queen's English and that sort of thing. Um, but I've been doing it for about 10 years now, it's been. This is actually the, the yes, 10 years this summer it's been. Um, so it's been fun. It was a bit of a happy accident, really. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yes. Um, did you expect the sort of response that you've got from it when you first started it? No, not at all. Not remotely. It was just something I was doing for myself, just to do something. I'd been doing lots of music, and I, I, I just thought, let's try this. I, I, I was trying to bring together all the elements of things I'd done in the past. So I'd been in a hip-hop band, and I'd been in this dandy punk band, and been quite into the whole chappy thing, and played the banjo So I thought, I'm going to see what happens if I bring the whole thing together. And then somebody, I think I'd, I'd recorded a song, put it up on a MySpace page, it was ten years ago, <laughs> And then somebody got in touch with me and said, oh, could you come and play at a festival? So I thought, right, I'd better write some more songs then. So I got a sort of 20-minute set together and went and played at this little festival, and it just went down a storm. Right. And I was quite surprised. Escalated from there sort of yes, thing. Yes, and yeah. it just you know, started getting bookings, and then, yeah, here we are. Perfect. Um, would it be fair to consider you a dandy? I would, yes, I think so. I mean, there's, you know, there are numerous small differences between dandies and chaps and bounders and things like that, but yes, I would think so. A dandy. Yeah. Okay. Um, what does it take to be one? Well, I think there's, um, you know, you must have a certain joie de vivre, as it were, and one must know how to dress. There are certain rules which can be broken only when you know them. Right, like, okay. Such as wearing, not wearing a, uh, a matching tie and pocket square. They must complement each other, but they should never match. Okay. They're just the little, the, the devil's in the details. Subtleties. Exactly. Yeah. You can always tell, you know, someone who's a chap or a dandy, just that. Okay, you've not quite got it right. That suit's definitely from Burton's or something. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with that necessarily, but they, you know, not usually. Though. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, so you yourself are a huge fan of hip hop. Um, would you consider what you do a uh, homage? Oh, yes, absolutely, yes. I'd consider, I'd like to think it's actually an alarm of hip hop now, a little part of it. Hip hop fans may disagree with me, possibly, yeah. but there you go, that's their lookout. But yes, it's definitely an homage. It's not, you know, it's I'm not parodying necessarily. It's, yeah. uh, it's all part of the whole circus of hip hop. Okay, cool. Um, what do you think? That's interesting because I'd like to know what you think of hip hop today. Well, I think hip hop. Obviously, we're living in slightly curious and odd times, and I think this is now the time for hip hop to step up. And I think it started, but. The, Obviously, they're a bit old, but the, new, the late, latest Tribe Called Quest album was amazing. Obviously, we've got Kendrick Lamar, yeah. who's possibly one of the, you know, certainly with To Pimp a Butterfly, possibly recorded one of, you know, I'm, I'm strictly old school. Yeah. I'm very old school, but To Pimp a Butterfly, I think, was one of the best hip-hop albums I've ever heard. Yeah, and I'd just agree. very imaginative, and just so much going on it, and so dense, and it was just absolutely a work of genius. So I think there's a lot of hope in hip-hop. Okay. It could, yes, now we're living in times like this. There could be another little hip hop revolution. Yeah, on the way. I agree. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I fully agree with you. But what do you think? So, sort of say, like, you know, you've got like a lot of there's a lot of sort of subcategories to hip hop now, isn't it? It's expanded yes. so much, and you've got things like like mumble rap, for example. Yeah, mumble rap. <laughs> what, what do you think about that? Well, I mean, I don't know. It's not. It's not for me to be. Yeah. Quite frank. It's. It's. I think there's certain. It seems to find. It seems to be a lot of mumble rap. It seems to be people who are on Instagram and just say it. 
you know, they, they'll say what they do. They'll always say, almost all Americans, they will always say rapper somewhere along there. And you're like, no, you're not. Yeah. You're really not. You're just a <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's, yeah, it, obviously, I think there's, there's parts of it that are probably fine. Like, like all these things. You know, there will be good bits. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Focus on my lips. Usually a huge pound of absolute trash underneath it somewhere. Cool. So when, when it, coming back to chat pop, would you consider yourself the inventor? Well, I would consider myself the inventor of the term chat pop. Okay. Yes. And obviously there's Professor Elemental, who's also around. But he was originally, until I came along, he was calling himself a, a steampunk rapper. Or yeah, that I sort remember. Of thing, or yeah, Victorian yeah. rapper. So, whereas me, I mean, the whole Mr. B thing, the whole idea came to me. It was something I'd been, that had been percolating away for a while, but I think I was in the pub, I would imagine. And we, yeah, I just, the whole thing came to me and I was like, it's going to be called Mr. B the Gentleman Rhymer and it'll be called Chat Pop. And yes, so it was one of those things that you often have ideas like this, but often don't follow through on them. Yeah, it's one of those lucky times when I thought, okay, let's actually do this. Okay. And it worked out. So yes, I, I'm certainly the inventor of the term. Okay, okay. Um, so in regards to Professor Elemental... Yes. I mean, you guys had a little... I guess you've had beef, I guess you could say. There has been beef. There's been beef. I mean, where's it at now? Is it still... Is it still something... You know, you still at oh, each other's throats? Oh, we, no, we, we pop out for a little drinky every now and again. We try and catch up, whatever. And obviously, our, our social diaries are tricky because we're always gigging about the place and that sort of thing. But, you know, usually at some point during the week, we'll try and catch up for a little drink every now and again, a cup of tea or something. Um, yes, we keep, you know, we've occasionally, we sort of more collaborate now, we, we do do shows together, but we don't do the battle thing, I think that's, it's kind of a shame for a lot of people, because everyone wants to see that, but we can't just keep doing it, it's rather boring, so, you know, often uh, he'll do a set, then I'll do a set, then we'll do a few things together at the yeah. end, um, yes, and it works, yeah, it always works as a good night out. Yeah, I can imagine, yes. yeah. So yeah, we're kind of terribly chummy now, really. Did you meet, was it through sort of your music that you both met? Yes, I think we've both been doing what we are doing. Probably started vaguely the same time, and we were completely unaware of each other. And it was a chap called, um, um, called Jimmy from a band called the Bobby McGee's in Brighton. Sort of said to me, "Have you seen this this chap, Professor Elemental?" And I thought, "No." And so I don't care for him. That's <laughs> why so I just thought, "Okay, well, I'd never heard of him." So I looked at the video and thought, "Oh, well, that's quite similar." And then I saw how many hits it had. I was like, "Oh, bugger." <laughs> um, Yes, yeah, so we, and then we met, actually the first time we met was at a public enemy gig in Brixton, <laughs> which was quite good, and then I didn't see him again probably for a, a year and a half, and then he, obviously I think in that time, he'd had lots of people I think going up to him at gigs thinking he was me, or he'd had lots of people in the Brighton hip hop community in his, in his ear saying, whoa, what about this Mr. B bloke, you know, and so he did fighting trousers. Called you out. As a diss, <laughs> yes. And I think, you know, as speaking to him afterwards, we, he just said, you know, he just always wanted to do a diss track, and I was the first person who came along. Yeah. It was a natural fit for yeah. his diss song. So, um, yes, yeah, so we did that. And it didn't do either of us much harm, no. because suddenly there was a story around the whole thing mm -hmm. with the chat pot beef. We ended up on the front page of the Wall Street Journal. Did you actually? Yeah, <laughs> we That's actually amazing. Did. Obviously, it's a large front page, it's yeah, a broadsheet, yeah. and we were just down the bottom there, but... Yes. Do you remember the, he the headline of the story? Um, what was it? I think it just said something like, in chat pop, rappers rhyme about cricket and pipe smoking. Something like that. Yeah, right, It wasn't okay. spe <coughs> specifically about the beef. Well, it, it became about the beef and the wrestling, but the title was just that. Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> That's pretty cool. There you go. So, I mean, a lot of your music is, you know, is revolved around sort of like quite English things, I would say. I mean, yes. Do you, you, would you consider yourself an English person? Like, how, how does that sort of come into it? Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, yes, well, I mean, I've always, even from previous things, I've always been slightly obsessed with the whole notion of Englishness. And I think, you know, really in that kind of mould of, say, Tony Hancock, who was that sort of suburban dreamer, who would always, I think that's, that's a, a, a peculiarly sort of British thing, really, in a way, that's sort of, kind of suburban dreamer, but never really getting anywhere, and just always getting things slightly wrong, and yes, there's, all, there's just a general air of mild failure about being English generally, <laughs> I think. Obviously, you know, there's that whole thing about the people trying to cling on to the fact we had this empire and what have you, which is clearly long, long ago gone. But I think it's become, this mild failure has become part of the national psyche in a way. Yeah. That we're all, you know, we're, we tend to be quite self-effacing and that sort of thing. I think a lot of Americans don't quite understand that. 
that sort of you know we were sort of doing it, doing ourselves down. We take the piss out of ourselves quite a lot, I think. Don't yeah, we? exactly, yeah. exactly, and and each other, and we're but we're never too upset about it because yeah. it's part of who Just, we yeah. are. Yeah. We we that's, take the piss. Absolutely, yeah, <laughs> that's what we do. Absolutely. Um, with your music, sort of, who influenced you initially to get into music? Crikey, I guess um, well Prince, so I think for me was a big influence. Just and just the way he went about things and the fact that he was 17 years old and he managed to negotiate with Warner Brothers producing, playing all the instruments on his first album, yeah. which is something that you'd never be able to do that now. Mm-hmm. And he you know, played all the instruments on it, produced it, wrote everything. And yeah, his sort of, that sort of independent nature he had. And even to the end, you know, he's, he was an early adopter of doing things online, you know, of releasing things on the internet. He was way ahead of his time, actually, yeah, in, yeah. That, in regards to But obviously, to, yeah. at the same time, would still slightly stitch himself up by being a bit overly litigious with people who would put his stuff on YouTube. Yeah. And that's the thing, which is a bit of a shame about after, he, you know, when he died, that, you know, his stuff went in the charts, but it's so, it was difficult to get hold of. Yeah. Even, you know, because it wasn't like he didn't put it on iTunes and that sort of thing. There was only certain things that were on iTunes. And so, yeah, it's, it's almost that, he was slightly <laughs> kicking his own He was halfway there, wasn't he? But halfway yeah, not. At exactly. The same he time, couldn't yeah. quite decide what to do in the end. I think he was working out what the next play was going to be. Mm, definitely. And obviously that went. But yeah, he was certainly an influence. And obviously, you know, lots of the early hip hop stuff. But even sort of bands I used to, I think my favourite bands was, back in the day, was the Stray Cats, or like a rockabilly band. I was a rockabilly when I was like 11, 12. Right. So, you know, I'd turn up at school with a big quiff and what have you. And um, yes, the various things like that, yeah, just sort of that I started. Just weirdly, you know, my parents were never into musical particularly, but I always remember when I was a kid, every Christmas I'd get a guitar. I didn't really know how to play it, but I just wanted to play instruments. And that's sort of just it carried on from there, really. Right, okay. It was mostly, you know, it was a very wasted teenage teenage years of just largely sitting at home recording, doing like, I had this little tape to tape deck that I'd record something on there, switch the tapes over, then record on top of that, and, you know, very sort of rudimentary ways of doing things, right. but just. Yeah, sort of multi-tracking at home on a little tape to date deck. But um, yeah, that's what I liked doing. So it just carried on from there, really. Cool. So when it comes to sort of your live performances, what can we expect from you today at the Great Estate? Um, a few old a few old chap hop favourites. And a few a couple of the medleys I'll do. I don't know how many of them. Maybe I'll, I might pop my Manchester medley in there, possibly. See if a few, few people might rem- remember that. Um, there'll be a couple of new numbers from the latest long player. There's a rumpus going on. Um, there'll be a few of those. Um, yes, hopefully, you know, there'll be some singing along. There'll be just lots of japes. Perfect. Do you, when you, when you do perform, do you sort of, are you quite loose with it? Do you base it on the audience in front of you a lot of the time? Yes, yes, I've done, I used to, you know, it used to be give the sound man your backing tracks and you'd have a set list. Whereas now I could have vaguely, top and tail, I know what I'm going to play to introduce the show and to finish the show. But in the middle, it's, I just see it think, oh, this one might work. Right, yeah, yeah. I did, th- actually last night I was, I did ask people, the last couple of nights of Brighton Fringe, I said, has anyone got any requests? But then, I think the, f- the lot on the Friday didn't quite get what I meant. I think there were, somebody asked me to play Lady Marmalade. I, was like, I clearly don't know how to play that. It's not. <laughs> it's not really my catalogue. Like, okay. I said, sorry, I, I misjudged. I thought you were connoisseurs. But no, I, I was asking if you wanted me to play any live old chap hop favourites. Uh, there was go, oh, play some Gary Barlow. Like, okay. And then last night I'd asked, and someone asked for some, Rather obscure chap up track from like my first album or something, and I, that I've really just not played for probably like eight or nine years. So right. I said to apologise, say sorry. I would just not be able to play that. Yeah. I can't do it. I can't remember how it goes. Um, so lastly, um, what's in what's in the future for Mr. B? Where are we where's, where are we going? Well, um, I've just finished recording um, and mixing it at the latest, the next the volume two of the Chap Step series which is, I had Acid Ragtime, Chapstep Volume 1, which was out 2014, I think. And so I've just done part two, which will be called Old Jack Swing. And this is, this is a, a Chappie's take on Garage, I think, really, this album. Whereas the last one was more of an Acid House album. Okay. This is Chappie's Garage, or Garage, should I say. <laughs> it's a Garage album. Um, so yeah, it should be interesting. It's, it's a lot more, there's more vocals on it than the previous uh, Chapstep album, which was largely instrumental. Whereas, um, yeah, I think it's going to be fun. Yeah, it sounds quite I interesting. Think, yeah, it should be. I think I might do a kind of separate, it's, a, it's basically a Mr. Be the Gentleman Selector album. Okay. So um, I'm possibly going to do a little 
tour separate from doing Mr. Be the Gentle Rhymer show, I might do a bit of a sort of garage night kind of thing. You know, it's, yeah, a bit more upbeat and that sort of thing. It's, yeah, it should be fun. Yeah, that sounds good. So that's going to be good. And after that, there's a possibility of forming a bit of a super group in the summer, which, I, which I, I to, I'm not allowed to say anything just now, but uh, it could be a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, then we'll see what happens after that. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to answer our questions. It's greatly appreciated. We're really excited to see you later. Pleasure. On. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. Very good. Be Thanks fun. very much. Nice Cheers. one. Cheers. Cheers. Thank fun. you.